Welcome, my name is Cohen Heldens and I'm a multi-platinum mixing engineer. In this tutorial I'm going to teach you guys how to mix a full song with Overloud plugins only. So now that we pretty much have treated every element in the mix from the vocals, the drums, the bass, the keyboards, the effect sounds, we end up at the mix bus. Or how a lot of people call it the money bus. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert the comp G as the first insert. And we're just going to give again light compression, so 2 to 1 ratio, slowest attack time, and auto release. And what we want to aim for here is about 1 to 2 dB compression, but I also want to engage the sidechain filter because again, I don't want to really interfere with the low end. So let's put this to about 250 Hz, and let's play it back and see where we're sitting. As you can see it's a bit too much compression, so let's move the threshold up a little bit. That's about right, so it's, it's really light, subtle taming of the peak. So I will play it without the compression and then with the compression engaged, so this is without it. And with the compressor engaged. As you can see, it glues the mix a bit tighter together. So now that the compression of the mix is done, I like to insert a special processing called Scope Tube. Let's add that in here. So, what Scope Tube does, it, it gives the mix a lift by use of tube uh, distortion. So I usually love to keep the bias at the lowest number, so in this case it's 1. And then I'm going to move the drive up, so I'm going to press play and I move the drive up so you can hear the difference of how much it lifts the entire mix. So I want to back off a little bit on the dry and wet signal, so I want to mix a little bit less of the wet signal with the dry. So let's move this back a little bit on the parallel. And then I'm going to play it back with Sculpt Tube disabled and then with Sculpt Tube enabled. So you can hear really what the tubes are doing as far as the distortion to the mix. So this is without it. And this is with Sculpt Tube enabled. And as you can see, it lifts the whole mix to the forefront. So what I want to do now is I want to start playing around with the distortion types. As you can see you have P0, P1 and P2. So I have a preference for P0 on entire mixes, but I will play around with the other types too so you can hear the different types of distortion that I will add to the mix. So let's play back P0 again and then I'll switch to P1, then again to P2 to go back to P0. As you can hear, P0 is more transparent, which I prefer for an overall mix. So with Scope Tube, let me bypass it and then enable it again so you can hear the difference in what it does to the mix as far as the lift goes. So this is without it again. And again with Scope Tube enabled. As you can hear the mix is much warmer, much fuller. So after Scope Tube I like to add another great plugin for the mix bus, which is Tape Desk. So the beautiful thing with Tape Desk is that we're not only getting a tape emulation, but we're also getting console emulation at the same time to further make our mix less digital sounding. So we have different modes here. We have the S4000, the N80, and the T88. So I prefer the S4000 because it's more subtle than the other types, but I will also go through them so you can hear the different types of tape and console distortion, compression, it'll give your mix. So let's start off with the S4000. Let's start off with 
inside and I wish that I could move your tires they help me here so I like to usually use a slow tape speed of 7.5 inches per second and keep the bias at normal. I don't want to really change how much it rolls over adds on the mix. I keep the wound flutter to the lowest too and then I usually like to drive the recording level a bit more than the playback level. So I'm going to play back and let you hear how it sounds the more you increase the record level and then I will do the same thing if you increase the playback level. So I always have them linked together, so whenever I boost one of them, the other one dips. As you can hear I did it extremely, so you can really hear the distortion happening. So let's put this to zero again, and let me boost the playback level instead of the recording level and see how much of a difference that makes. And as you can see, the recording level really pushes and drives the tape and the console versus the playback more. So I always prefer to drive my recording level. So let's bring this back to zero. And then let me just slightly bring in a little bit more recording level to heat up the mix a little bit. So let me bypass tape desk and enable tape desk again so you can hear the difference. So this is without it. And this is with tape desk enabled. As you can hear, it brought a bit more warmth, but also rolled off a little bit of the high end, which is usual with tape compression. So let me play it back with the bias set to over, so you can hear the difference. And bias set again to normal. As you can hear, it's very subtle, but I like to keep it on normal and then add EQ afterwards. So let me play this back with the different console types. So as you can hear, the S4000 is much more transparent but also much more warmer so it rolls off a little bit of that high end so to bring that back instead of using the over bias setting i want to use an eq84 and also bring in a little bit more lows and a little bit more mid-range to make the mix a little bit more louder so let's do that let's insert a eq84 and what i want to do is give a little boost at about 60, just a small one. And then on the mid band, I like to boost a little after 3.2 kilohertz for more presence in the mix. And I want to add a little bit of that low mid. So let's move to the other mid band and make sure you enable all of them. I put it at about 500 and give that a small boost as well. So let's play this back with the EQ enabled and then with the EQ disabled. So this is with the EQ. So as you can hear, there's still a little bit low fight as far as the mix goes. So let's enable the high-end band as well and add in a little bit of air. Probably around 12 where it's sitting now. And let's play the mix back without the EQ enabled. As you can hear, without the EQ, it's very muffled. So let's enable it again and listen back with the EQ enabled. As you 
you can hear the mix really came to a life with that final general mix bus EQ. So this is usually how I approach every mix scenario that I'm dealing with in terms of processing and the way of handling the individual instruments and sounds.